are seeing currently uh, quite a lot of um, decline in development funding. Even though ODA is on the increase, um, quite a number of uh, partners are contributing a lot more to the short-term humanitarian assistance. So relative to humanitarian assistance, development funding for long-term needs is much more lower. So let's say since 2010, um, ODA portion of development has risen by only about 6-7%, whereas for humanitarian assistance, it's about 59% uh, increase. So you can see the tension between short-term develop, short-term uh, ODA money going for humanitarian versus the long-term needs. We're also seeing quite a lot of skepticism in uh, majority of the country's uh, partners towards multilateralism, um, which uh, has made our core funding decline uh, more than uh, we would like, and a lot more funding going to earmarking. So we're seeing partners' preference to earmark funding to concrete projects. Um, and in this case, while we remain a $5 billion organization, um, the portion of our core resources, which is, not as ear, which is not earmarked, but the more strategic quality funding, going to about 20% and going maybe now this year 19 to 18% of our overall funding. Um, and the majority of our funding is coming from non-core resources. So what can we do um, in this context? Well, ODA now um, needs to be leveraged. We're seeing a lot of um, partners and actors, including Ida and other donors, really looking at how to leverage public funds with private um, um, funding. And this means we need to work with private sector more. And in this region, in Asia Pacific, private sector is an important player, especially now with the SDGs. Um, we need to bring private sector and other partners around and leverage our ODA and our core resources to bring in other partners. Um, this is something that's very exciting and it's very exciting to be here at the uh, management meeting of Asia Pacific where the leadership and country offices are really eager to, to work and take risks and experiment in this way of working. I just met with the colleagues also looking at impact investment. So a lot of this is looking at how do we blend financing, how do we leverage the funding that we have and bring private sectors um, on board. So this is uh, uh, very important. The other thing we're seeing is that our internal tools, rules and regulations have to adapt. Um, we need to adapt to these new realities. Um, and in this region, um, we, we do have a very good record now with um, domestic resource mobilization. We refer to this also as government cost sharing, um, where last year the region met the 10% target and this year you've set yourself the 15% uh, um, target and I have no doubt that this is going to be uh, met. Um, this is very important because with, you know, domestic resource mobilization is um, also part of mobilizing funding for the SDGs. Um, it is very much part of the Addis Ababa action, um, looking at different sources of funding, so whether it's through um, helping government um, implement a loan they will have gotten from IFIs, or if it's um, helping government procure something that's critical for their development needs and the SDGs. As we see uh, in the Philippines, uh, our office is uh, very much involved in that. So this is um, very exciting and other regions are also looking at Asia Pacific to, to learn from the experience. We need very good capacity and communication. Um, we need to show the results of our work. 
we need to ensure that we give visibility to the partners who fund us. So communication, um, communication of results in a way that is clear and simple and linking um, the funding with results. So even if even when we're fundraising, we need to be able to tell the partner when they invest in UNDP, what do they get in return? So we need to clearly show what are the results, how much it costs, how much UNDP is putting in, and what is the gap. And the more we are clear on that, it'll make our fundraising much easier. This also means that our country offices need to really work on pipeline development um, to prepare projects. Um, and when you're speaking with the donor, you shouldn't go with a thick, you know, project document that's not clear, but one, two pages. Again, what are the activities and the results we want to achieve by when? What are the partners? What is the money? What's the gap? I can guarantee you that if we do that and we have a pipeline of these kinds of very tangible, concrete products, it'll make fundraising much easier for both country offices, the regional office, but also um, the Bureau for um, External Relations and Advocacy, which uh, is here to support the efforts uh, of the country offices. So um, I want to just talk a little bit about um, the growth areas for this region because um, we looked at um, what are some of the growth potentials in addition to, um, you know, the good work that you're doing but the vertical funds. So we've seen quite a good um, investment the UNDP uh, regional office is making in developing um, programs for the Green Climate Fund but also the Global Environment Facility. So we are going to see increased growth in, in the vertical funds in this area. We are also projecting increase, as I mentioned, on the government cost sharing, domestic resource mobilization, um, private sector. Um, currently, you know, UNDP's income from private sector is 1%. For the rest of the UN, it's 9%. So there's a lot more work um, that we can do. Um, we're also seeing that this region could work much more closer with the European Union um, and the Commission, um, both at country level, but also how we make sure that um, through our office in Brussels, uh, we advocate and we share the work. The last one is the IFIs. Um, what a huge untapped potential in this region um, and corporately. Um, so we have the Asian Development Bank, we have the AIIB, the New Development Bank, we have the Islamic Development Bank. All of these um, banks are providing over $45 billion just in 2015 alone to this region. So how do we make sure that we're partnering with them much more closely in getting the development results that we want to have done? Um, not just only money through UNDP, but leveraging them to um, have greater uh, impact. So these are some of the growth areas and very exciting um, possibilities. Um, we need to adapt with the times. We need to change our rules and regulations. We need to take some risks, so we need to make sure that um, we take calculated risks. Um, we encourage staff, but uh, very important to communicate clearly on our narrative, what is our role, what is our value added, and what is it that we want to achieve.